there i had a, a customer he was it was belgium um they made casting equipment um for like alloy those alloy rooms that they were doing um and he would he would his name was uh Dion, and he would say chris over there we we protect against suicider is what he would say all right so they're a little little higher standard level right so We'll, I'll show you a little bit more on, we'll do a little deep dive on the performance level. Okay, so risk reduction. If the level of risk is not acceptable, feasible risk reduction measures will be implemented. Okay, risk will be reduced using the hazard control hierarchy, and I'll show you what that is. Okay. So here we are. So we talked about our scoring. We know how to get the score. Now, how do we apply a solution to that piece of equipment? we follow this control hierarchy, okay? This is why we love working with OEMs because the most effective way to avoid against the hazard, right, is what? Yeah, eliminate it. Figure out a way to not have it interface with the operator at all, okay? Make it go away. <laughs> That's for sure going to save uh, injury, right? So the hazard's not even accessible anymore. So. Benefit of thinking of safety up front doesn't always happen. A lot of times we get calls after the design done. Hey, oh yeah, we need to. This thing's rocking, and we need to sit for it, <laughs> right? Um, so good idea to be part of the design process early on because we can use the elimination method. Uh, when we get called out onto sites, uh, we're generally going to start right here, okay, with the second measure. So this first one is eliminate. The second one is if we can't eliminate it. Let's put some engineering controls on it right here. Okay, this is the design it out. If we can't eliminate it. Let's apply engineering controls to protect people against that hazard. Okay. Then once we implement that, if it's possible, we go down to what are called administrative controls. Remember the chainsaw, user's manual, stickers. Don't touch that. It's moving fast. It's going to cut your finger. We do that. Okay. Why do we think that engineering controls? Would be ranked as a higher priority than an awareness awareness means. And is you have eliminating the hazards with barriers, and you're preventing something, some element, the X factor. What's the X factor? The human part. Humans. They do dumb stuff sometimes. You know, not intentionally. Okay. But sometimes they do they do silly things. So we're eliminating the human element. And that's why engineering controls is uh, above administrative controls. OK. So we're going to design out the hazard if we can. OK. If we can't design out. Well, here's a, OK. Here's an example of designing out uh, the hazard, right? So. This is a, a street down in Arizona. Uh, you've got an industrial facility here. There's train tracks, right? Department of Transportation's done a sufficient risk assessment and found that, you know, there's traffic in the mornings when this industrial park folks are coming into work. There's probably a little traffic at lunch, probably more traffic in the afternoon. Frequency of the train crossing, they decided that these awareness means are sufficient based on the risk level. Okay. This is designing out that hazard, right? Higher frequency, okay, more risk. They just they took the measure to design that out. Same train track, just put an overpass there. Okay. And we're gonna jump down. I'll talk about so this afternoon is going to be, we will talk about the technology that we apply once we've got our hazards all assessed and figure out what we wanna what we want to apply as our engineering controls. We're gonna skip that for now and we're gonna go down to administrative controls. These are things like awareness means, right? So lights, beacons, uh, forklifts driving through. You sometimes you'll see spotlights on the ground. It's an awareness means. You're walking by and you're like, what's that? Oh, it's a forklift. Oh, okay. Right? Lights work. I like the lighting personally because I think lights draw your eyes. Um, just, I don't know, it's just natural. It's like, oh, red light. Okay. You know, it's something like instinctual. Uh, computer warnings. Signs and labels, beepers, horns, sirens. That's all awareness means stuff. Okay, training and procedures, training your folks, right? We do that when we install, 
when we install our engineering controls, we make sure the operators and maintenance people are trained. Okay. So we're going to shore up. We're shoring up anything here with our administrative controls. And so you can see that applying safety is a combination of all these things. The last one is uh, personal protection equipment. Okay. Safety glasses, face shield, earplugs, gloves, protective footwear, respirators. Okay. Everybody always wears those, right? Steel toed shoes. Dad never wore, it was like dad never wore respirator mask by the way when he was painting. You know, he's had these like, just Bondo burgers flying out. It was just like, seriously, dad, like, take care of yourself, please. Right? Thanks. Fun memories. Uh, effective awareness means. Here we go. Caution. This sign has sharp edges. Do not touch the edges of this sign. Also, bridge is out. <laughs> okay. Not super effective. How many of you guys? have seen one of these and they fire off and you're like, oh, I got this Ooh, right through. OK, or seen somebody do that. OK, awareness means not the most reliable. And then, of course, nobody in this room has ever run a red light, right? Never happened. OK, so that, so we apply those things to, to shore up the engineering controls and to design it up, right? They help, but they're relying on humans. And so we don't want to use that as the primary and I see that all the time. It's like, do we put a chain in front of that thing? We put a sign there that says, this is super dangerous. Don't mess with it. We're good. Like, no, you're not. <laughs> like, you know, uh, so here we go. Effectiveness of training. Okay, we all train the forklift operators for training. Let's train this guy. All right, let's get started. Let's get started on this rewiring. Oh, rats, I forgot to walk out that panel. Oh, I'm not going all the way back there. I don't have time. It's all the way across the room. I got work to do. I just finish this real quick. Quick job. No one ever goes to that box anyways. Here's some here's uh buddy his friend. Hey just noticed that switch was off so uh I turned it off turn it on for you. Right. Okay effectiveness of PPE. We've all been there. We're working. Boss comes to check out what's going on. <laughs> How's it going, guys? You guys up to? Right? I didn't really see that. I think pull up. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of Rodney Dage, the look on his face. Man. What's going on, guys? OK, so, so that's why we don't use the word uh, administrative controls as our primary go to. Okay, it's designed it out, engineering controls that shored up with engineering controls. Then that's, then they're there. Okay, um, once we use our scoring system, we're going to assess the residual risk. Once risk reduction measures have been so selected, the residual risk shall be assessed. Okay, uh, residual risk shall be assessed to verify that the selected measures, including training and PPE, are appropriate for the application and that they effectively reduce the risk. Okay, hazards that present higher risk of harm should not be addressed using less preferred risk reduction measures. This is the and like I see it all the time. It's like we didn't have time to do it. We just put a sign, right? This is it's what that's all about. Okay. Um, that that should not be done unless no other solution is easy. Okay, it says B11.0 section 6.5.1. It's not in OSHA, but OSHA says to look at the standards. That's what the standards say. Okay, use the same process and scoring system as the initial assessment with the consideration of implemented risk reduction measures to reduce severity and or probability. Okay, and this is, uh, by the way, when we do our uh, risk assessments, we have a, uh, this is where we would do what's like a gap analysis where somebody else has already installed some stuff, and we'll gap analysis and make sure that that recommendation, that installation does meet uh, the appropriate performance level. OK. OK, and then we ask ourselves, is the acceptable risk obtained? And it may be a company standard that you guys that you guys roll out, right? You may you may have your own safety standard that says 
hey, everything that we've assessed and then we remediate, we need to have a residual risk score of X or below, right? Every piece of equipment. Uh, it could be something, some and different companies differ, right? And it could also vary based on application as we saw. Um, so once the residual risk has been established for each hazard, a decision shall be made to accept the residual risk or to further reduce it. Let's put a second set of light curtains on there, guys. Super dangerous. Category four, control reliable. But I think we should put another set of light curtains on it just to be doubly sure. Does that bias anything? Get it. Too safety, too extra. No, it doesn't. No, because the type four category, the type four safety solution is 100%. So it, it, it's not going to bias anything. Okay. Team determines if it, if the acceptable risk is achieved. Okay. The decision to accept tolerate risk is influenced by many factors, including culture, technological, and economic feasibility of installing additional risk reduction measures, the degree of protection achieved through the use of additional risk. Yeah, the degree of protection achieved through the use of additional risk reduction measures and the regulatory requirements for best industry practice. Okay. So proposing, so this is basically a critical assessment process. So present acceptable risk reduction system to the stakeholders. Okay. When I see stakeholders here, I'm thinking when we get our design done, we want to make sure everybody's on board, and particularly the people that use the equipment. Okay, we don't want to just come in, design something because we think it needs to be designed this way and that's the way it's going to be. And then three months later, the door interlock disappeared. Magic, right? Uh, our safety system has been defeated. Uh, it's not functioning properly. Uh, that's that's the key there is uh, bringing the stakeholders in. Okay, 